DFM, DFM rocks. Bulaminaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, crime spree panics Tavirua residents. Gaunda says detained ships meet safety standards. And Rumbuka says he'll run in the next election regardless. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spate. A spate of robberies in the newly developed Tadiroa subdivision in Asinu has residents living in fear for their life and property. Six houses were broken into in just a week and victims have not only had cash and jewellery stolen, but groceries as well. Pranita Prakash visited the settlement and files this report. For the past few days, residents of New Basanga Road, Vasasala Lane, Bu Lane, Ganimbilo Street, Vara Street and Walai Circle, have come home or woken up to these, Luva blades removed, grills cut open and rooms ransacked. My house was broken into last Monday. It was around 7 p.m. I left home around 6.45 p.m. I just went to Balilebu and when I came up, within an hour my house was broken into. The light was still on and these alleged robbers have their own time. A number of break-ins have occurred between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. and residents believe the culprits are monitoring the movements of victims before choosing which home to target. Eleanor Reddy says they now have to stay alert 24-7. Don't feel safe in our own houses, which is not a good thing. Um, we feel like we're, we're outsiders in our own houses. And um, yeah, there's, we have that fear of um, staying, staying alone when we shouldn't be feeling that uh, fear inside us. Apart from cash and other items, groceries are also being stolen. It's not about jewelry or uh, laptops and all. They're taking clothes, uh, they're even taking groceries, you know. They even took toilet paper, you know. They're going to that extent. I don't know why people are getting to so low, no, in that. And uh, they really search the whole house, up and down. When I reached home, I can't even depreciate, uh, differentiate what, which place or where, where is all the things gone. Police spokesperson Anane Soro confirms they have received reports and are now looking into the matter. We will have a look at the, uh, the analysis of stats with regards to the reports, when it was committed, and then we will apply the strategies accordingly. Uh, Following these break-ins, at least four people have left the area, which has only been around for two and a half years. Tomorrow we will look at what the residents are calling on the authorities to do and how they are willing to assist. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Gaunda Shipping Limited has denied that its vessels are not compliant with the Maritime Safe Ships Regulation 2014. MSAF has detained all vessels owned by Gaunda Shipping for non-compliance. An operator, George Gaunda, is having none of it. Lena Reese with the story. Captains, masters and engineers working for Gounder Shipping today tried to clear the air on the standoff with MSEF but couldn't come through with all the answers. As the media conference progressed, staff had to call director George Gounder in Japan to take questions. The other vessels we've complied, you can see the documents in front of you. Those documents were handed off to MSEF. Unfortunately, with MSEF, they got very poor record keeping. They keep uh, putting the documents away somewhere else or highly cements uh, that no one knows about it. The Maritime Safety Authority says it has yet to cite these documents. It is a maritime uh, law of the country where ships should comply. Whether his system is higher than what we are putting in place, that is yet to be seen. But if it's higher, well and good. But he has not presented us with anything to go by where he can seem to show that he is in compliance. It's turned into a case of he said, she said, as Gounder Shipping and MSEF stand their ground, insisting each party is on the right side. In the meantime, six vessels remain tied up at Narayan Jetty in Suva. MSEF met with compliant shipping operators today to arrange alternative services for routes which were previously covered by Gounder Shipping. Lena Reese, FBC News. 
Lena Reese has been closely following the story and joins us live now. Lena, is Gounder Shipping the only company that is non-compliant? MSEF has confirmed that 14 companies have complied with the Maritime Safe Ships Management Regulations 2014. Acting Chief Executive Captain Philip Hill says the, other comp the only other company apart from Gounder Shipping is Brighton Shipping, which is non-compliant. Hill adds that Brighton Shipping is owns the the vessel MV Liahona, which uh, and they are currently trying to meet their obligations. Now, Jackie, I've also spoke to I also spoke to the manager of Interlink Shipping this afternoon, and they have confirmed that they will provide services to Kandavu. Are we gonna do the uh, Kandavu route like uh, what uh, Mr. Gounder's uh, vessel is to service, which is on Tuesday night and on Friday night as well. We are trying to get comments from other companies regarding their services, at uh, in the regarding their services at the routes that are currently affected. Jackie, thanks so much for that, Lena. Sudelpa leader Sitiveni Rumbuka has broken his silence to FBC News about his intention to stay on with the party, despite any possible change to his position as party leader. In an exclusive interview with FBC News, Rumbuka says he will remain with the party, even if he's voted out as party leader at the end of next year. Ali Kimbia with the story. Even at the age of 70, Sitiveni Rumbuka is confident about his intention to contest the next election again under the Sudelpa banner. Of course, I will. I, I owe it to the people who have voted for me personally this time uh, to, uh, to continue to go with them. I'll, I will go with them in their support for the party. Rambuka's leadership position in Sudelpa comes to end next year, but he's finally made it clear that he's eager to continue in any capacity. Rambuka will be 74 at the next general elections, but he believes he has what it takes to put up another fight. And I've assured the, uh, my uh, parent chief that I am available. He called me. Uh, I failed him in the last election. We didn't win. But I've uh, uh, sort of committed myself to uh, continuing. Despite mosing out in last year's general elections, Rambuka is confident the party will do well next time. Uh, to support whoever will be the party leader at that time, uh, taking the party forward to uh, general election and if we are successful, I believe we can be and uh, the possibilities are really good. So Delpa's constitution states that a party leader must be elected during the second AGM next year and there yet may be a challenge from within the party to replace Rumbuka at the top. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Housing Ministry will investigate the financial status of people living in squatter settlements as part of its socio-economic survey. Minister Pramila Kumar says a lot of concerns are being raised that some people living in these settlements are not genuine squatters. Kelly Vathala reports observations made by authorities show that some earn enough to afford formal housing. The socio-economic survey will reveal whether these settlers generally need government support. We will conduct that to find out uh, the ability of uh, some people settling in that area, whether they'll be able to pay uh, the market rate or should the government assist them financially. But a system will be worked out and that will be done through the squatter control unit. Housing Minister Pramila Kumar says they want to identify those who are cheating the system. We've seen in the squatter settlements there are a lot of illegal constructions going on. In other words, somebody has got a house already, they're extending it, which you're not supposed to do that because the reason why they're doing it, they think that when the land is developed, they will get a bigger land. In reality, that's not what's going to happen because uh, we have to look at um, the subdivision and the size of the lots that we're going to produce and that's the lot that will be given out. The ministry recently established a squatter control unit which will ensure houses are not built anywhere and anyhow. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Up ahead, 10 women part of Peacekeeping Mission Group. And FBC celebrates 65 years of progress. Details after the break. Bula, 
Oh, ini nih mereka rakyat yang untuk terletak di Borong, di Bulat FM, namun di Indonesia. Ini bula, saya mau milih, saya mau titik di Mata Niwai, untuk terletak di Borong, di Bulat FM. Untuk terletak di Bulat FM, namun di Indonesia. Ini sambil lebih banyak, 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 Eu ngango é muito simbólico no carro, quando eu estou ali, tá cá, na barra não é, na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two é na série. Bula FM, number two é na série. A 45-year-old mother of two is ready to serve her country. Moa Maria Fanga is amongst the 10 women, part of the 134 RFMF officers, preparing at the Black Rock camp in Nandi for their deployment to the Middle East. Felipe Naikaso reports these officers will work under the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force helmet. We need to face up to the challenge. Ready for the challenge that lies ahead. A confident Moa Fanga will be leading a team of medical officers to the war-torn Golan Heights for one year. As a medical personnel serving in the Middle East, uh, it's going to be a huge experience and a, uh, for me it's going to be a life-changing experience. Moa, who has 30 years of experience as a nurse, says it's a proud moment for her family. Yes, we, they'll have reservations but I know they'll be praying for me. This is also the first time for member countries to come right here at Black Rock Camp to assist in training, which will take up to six weeks before deployment to the Golan Heights. It is an opportunity for you to serve your country and to serve the cause of international peace and security under the mantle of the United Nations. This has been a proud Fijian tradition for over 40 years. Everything that will be taught in Blackrock is uh, specifically for the mission area, uh, for Golan Heights, and uh, it will include all the other uh, all the uh, tasks. Also, over the next few weeks, the New Zealand Defence Forces will be assisting these RFMF officers in their preparations. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. With people as young as 26 years losing their eyesight due to diabetes, more awareness is now being created. Pacific Eye Institute Dr. Mbu Sikivo says 80% of visual impairment and blindness is due to uncorrected refractive errors in diabetes. She says 40% of people present themselves for the first time already have some level of diabetic eye disease. She says they are now raising awareness at community level. We are working together with the Ministry of Health Wellness Unit led by Dr. Tukana. So creating a lot of information, we've developed uh, pamphlets and manuals and this has been distributed to the lower levels of care, not only in Fiji but also across the Pacific. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation celebrates its 65th birthday today with the decade of number one rankings in radio and television. FBC Chief Executive Ria Said Kayum says the media house will continue to strive for improved services for the people of Fiji. Chosaya Nanunga reports. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation has come a long way from its humble beginnings, setting and surpassing benchmarks to stay ahead of the game. In order to meet the expectations of the growing population of a new generation of Fijians, we, we do the best that we can. We try and provide the best service, the best equipment and, and, and the best reach so that we are able to keep pace uh, with the, what's happening with the rest of the world. The world's becoming a smaller place. Saki Usataumbale has been with FBC for nearly 30 years. The transport manager is one of the many driving forces working behind the scenes. You can see that we have uh, changes of two fleets of a vehicle in uh, two, five years' time. We have the next one coming up now, we have it now. And the next one is the life of my life. In my home, I managed to get my house and I managed to have my kids at school. Since its rebranding, FBC has been a platform for young Fijians to catapult their professional career. The company believes in sourcing out talented individuals. Like everyone treats each other like family and, you know, it's such a great environment to work in. Uh, having to join a company that has a lot of experience and could have uh, given me a lot of knowledge about um, TV, radio, everything in general. It may be hard to believe, but from these premises, FBC runs three free-to-air TV channels and six radio stations. The official celebration for 65 years of broadcasting will be held in September. Sose Nanunga, FBC News. The state will rely on the caution interviews in the case against two men charged with murder. 
Apisai Lomani Jr. and Leone Naisake appeared in the Suva High Court today. It is alleged the two caused the death of Felipe Loloma at Waililia Farm in Kandavu last December. The two are alleged to have engaged in reckless assault, resulting in the victim's death. Naisake has been further remanded, while Lomani Jr.'s bail has been extended. The case will be recalled on September 2nd. And it's business time now with Rachel. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. And coming up after the break, Vinod Patel signs voluntary compliance framework. And in growing Fiji, state-of-the-art FNU gym to be completed next year. Stay with us. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiama here in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, one of the leading hardware companies, Vinod Patel, has become the first to sign the Voluntary Compliance Framework. The framework, designed by the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission in consultation with businesses, creates conditions necessary to facilitate voluntary compliance. Kurei Tandalala reports. Under the framework, traders are bound to comply with the customs law while reducing customs burdens and at the same time improving data quality. The process of natural justice the person that you're accusing needs to know what you've accused them of. And so generally when consumers come to us, the first question that we ask, have you made this known to the business? And they say, yes. Has it been resolved? No. If the market fails where the trader fails to recognize and resolve consumer protection issues, then it comes to us for further, further litigation. Vinod Patel, Chief Executive Virol Patel, says the framework will enable them to carry out their work efficiently and in accordance with the FCCC guidelines. I mean, most of the issues arise because, not because one's right or wrong, it's just mainly because um, misunderstanding of what law requires. So through this model, we expect to bring everyone on line. There's um, uh, FCCC can focus on other areas and day-to-day -day matters can be resolved according to the FCCC expectation between us and our customers. FCCC CEO Joel Abraham says the aim is to roll out the framework to other large businesses in PG and to ensure customers and traders conduct services in accordance to the FCCC guidelines. Kurei Tandulala, FBC News. After the success of the first FBC Tech Trade Show, plans are now underway for a bigger and better event next year. FBC Marketing and Sales Director Vijayan Kumar says 48 booths were sold out well ahead of the start of the event. Kumar adds three international tech companies that were also part of the event and all the 48 exhibitors have confirmed they spot for next year. From this morning, you know, I've been working with the team leader events, my CEO. We're talking about how we can, you know, make it bigger and better next year. But definitely, uh, we work in for the venue and the dates. Once that's confirmed, you know, you'll basically find out because, you know, we're the best one in terms of marketing. That's the feedback that we also got from our exhibitors. Sinifa from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the trading market. Let's review our local stock market activity last week. 1,762,845 shares changed hands in 52 transactions valued at more than $5.5 million. The large trading volume was attributed to the one-off special crossing transaction for Amalgamated Telecom Holdings Limited. Seven listed stocks noted share price changes. Communications Fiji Limited shares rose by 20 cents and closed the week at $5.80. Fiji Care Insurance shares increased by $0.05 cents to $2.10. FMF Foods was up $0.01 cent to end the week at $2.13. Fiji Television shares showed an upward movement of $0.60, cents, closing at $3.60. RB Patel Group shares closed the week at $8.05, noting a $0.05 cent increase. Rice Company of Fiji shares were up $0.01, cent, closing at $6.71. 
And Fijian Holdings Limited shares continued to show an increment of one cent to end the week at $1.93. Following the various share price movements, the overall market capitalization increased by 0.37% <coughs> and ended the week at $3.64 billion. That's a wrap from our local stock market, Pinaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to today's exchange rates. It was set this morning following the G20 summit and Trump's surprise meeting with Kim Jong-un. Foreign exchange markets were a little confused today. The Fiji dollar rose against the Chinese yuan but slid slightly against the U.S. greenback. It made some gains against both the Aussie and Kiwi dollar but fell slightly against the Kina, the Euro and the Yen. On to the commodities market, oil prices continued slowly rising at $59 per barrel. Gold remained on a price roller coaster, dropping more than $30 at $1,391 per ounce, and silver closed down at $1,519 per ounce. And in going Fiji tonight, work on the $8.5 million state-of-the-art gym at the Fiji National University Nasinu campus will be completed by the end of this year. Vice Chancellor Nigel Healy says the gym will be suitable for international meets as well. Healy adds the new facility will also boost students' performances in various sporting events. The gym can be used by the public as well. The gymnasium, the sports complex. Uh, that's well on track. Uh, that's going up very quickly. We expect it to be completed this year, by the end of this year. Um, that's got uh, an indoor basketball court that's configured to national or international standard for all the major sports, basketball, volleyball, netball and so on. And that's business for tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Coming up... Flying Fijians and camp for July tests. And three national football players fined and suspended. This and more in sports tonight. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM is hot. Hamachale Nasori se Mirchi FM bod julum. Hi, I'm Shara Pukash Bhatkata and I'm Tava Me Mirchi FM Stapkansan and Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suba. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Flying Fijians are in camp preparing for a two-match series against the Maori All Blacks and the Pacific Nations Cup. Captain Dominico Wangarimburotu says both tournaments are their main focus now, not the Rugby World Cup in September. Akula Dama with the story. It's back to business for the Flying Fijians, but they'll take each day as it comes. You know, if all I can say is we cannot focus to the, to the last match of the Rugby World Cup. We've got to focus on the build-up towards the towards the Maoris and the PNC. Um, but for me, it's personally, it's, uh, it's a focus on one game at a time. Coach John McKee says the ultimate goal is the World Cup, but it starts with the Maori tests. Uh, yeah, obviously, every game we play as the flying Fijians is very important. It is also in the, in the work we, we put in, in every single day of our, our camp towards Rugby World Cup 2019. And, and you know, we, we expect to make gains from from, from, from day one and, and very much looking forward to our opening game against the uh, New Zealand Maori. The Flying Fijians will spend a few days at the Singatoka Sand Dunes this week, something that excites the captain, Wangani Burotu. You know, all the boys have been away with the families and, um, and, uh, and doing their holidays, their breaks from their long seasons away from Europe and uh, away from the, where the clubs are. And um, we're all excited to, to start off this week. McKee also confirms today that he's after a Crusaders prop with links to Fiji. Yeah, George Bauer is, is one of a um, couple of players in, in New Zealand that we're on, ongoing talking to. The Flying Fijians will take on the Maori All Blacks in their first test at the ANZ Stadium Suva on the 13th of this month. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports.
The Fiji Women's Sevens team will be keeping a close eye on rival Australia at the 2019 Pacific Games in Samoa. The two teams are in separate pools and are tipped to face off in another gold medal playoff. While the Fijiana will hope to retain their gold, Australia, which is ranked fourth in the HSBC Sevens, will be out to avenge their final loss to Fiji at the last Pacific Games. Coach Sayasi Fuli adds, though, the Australians aren't the only threat at the tournament. Even though we are coming uh, uh, from, uh, from the series and the rest of the teams that are that taking part in the Pacific Games are not part of the series, but they, they always uh, uh, join uh, through wild cards, especially uh, Papua New Guinea and, and Samoa. The Fijiana is pulled alongside Papua New Guinea, Nauru and the Solomon Islands, while, the, while Australia is placed with Samoa, New Caledonia and American Samoa. Three national football players have been handed hefty fines by the Fiji Football Association. In an exclusive interview with FBC Sports, the Fiji FA has confirmed the players will not be considered for the Pacific Games later this month. Niraj Maharaj with this report. Colonel Sivuki, Narendra Rao and Ilamata Machese will not travel with the national side to Samoa. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why the board is going to come down very hard with this uh, play. Uh, uh, one, one player, for, for example, is second time. Uh, 2015, he let the country down. Two days before going to Rio, he broke camp. He was given a chance to, because of his uh, age, he given a chance and he's running the game. The Fiji Football Association has handed hefty fines to three national players who are alleged to have broken camp. Lotoka football's Colonia Sivoki, Bas Narendra Rao and Ilumata Machese's fate was decided when the players faced the tribunal. As you know, William Valentine of Nandi broke camp uh, last weekend. He'll be suspended immediately. And uh, the next board meeting will appear, but as, as I said, we'll come down very soon. People who don't have passion for the country, pride for the country, there is no place in football. For any sport uh, that the country, the government is spending so much money, the individual federations, possible they've been so much, yet this players have got this habit of uh, in, uh, uh, not uh, uh, having the passion to represent their nation. PGFA CEO Mohammed Yusuf says they will not tolerate players who keep breaking rules and do not have the pride to represent their country. The national team departs on July 5th. Niraj Maharaj. FBC Sports. Six Suva netball reps that were named in the Fiji Pearls team to the World Cup were given some extra support from the association's major sponsor, New World IGA. They each received a hamper with some essentials to keep them going for the duration of their stay in England, as well as some cash for spending. Faria Begum has more. President of the Suva Netball Association, Timaima Bulimailaudala, says the assistant for the girls has come at a crucial time. The six are Matila Vodea, Laisani Wanga, Kelera Nawai, Emma Molevu, Aliti, Torimbau, and Asilika Sevutia. With the financial backing also, uh, Suva has been able to retain its place in the national netball competition, so uh, inter-district, as the leader in netball. And uh, we would not have been able to do that without uh, New World IGA's uh, financial backing. New World IGA Head of Merchandise Jody Hart says the sponsorship enables the development of netball at the grassroots level across Suva. That was more just to encourage young, young girls and young women um, to get out and actually play sport and actually be healthy. I said Suva netball is actually is not just about you know young women now, it's actually there's young men and there's corporate houses and all that actually join in to, to play as well. The Fiji Pearls leave for England on Saturday. The Netball World Cup begins on Friday, this, the 12th, and ends on the 21st of this month. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Samoa has been declared ready for the 2019 Pacific Games, where 24 nations across the region will compete in 26 sports. Fijian middleweight champion Sebastian Singh is looking to further his career abroad. Singh, who fought to a draw with Sullivan in Hawaii in the welterweight title fight over the weekend, is confident that moving overseas will be the best option to develop his boxing capabilities. You know, there's no point of me staying here you know, uh, with all this talent and uh, just uh, keep staying inside the box. I need to you know, get out the box and get some bigger fights with some, uh, with some, with some better opponents. You know, there's a lot of good opponents out there in my weight division, Australia and New Zealand.
Indian Vice Captain Rohit Sharma admits lessons were learned from England's bowlers after India suffered its first defeat at the World Cup against the hosts yesterday. There have been some masterclass performances at the Cricket World Cup by the batsmen and even the wicket keepers. But there have been some stunning matches, catches as well, this time from the England and the India match. That's it from sports ahead in the uh, world of the weird and the wonderful. The mystery of your small jeans pocket solved. Jackie will have the details after the break. हम लोग रेडियो फीजी तो बहुत सुंदर से सुनता है बहुत अच्छा प्रोग्राम नंबर वन रेडियो कुमार सामी नायक है गोम वाली बुल लटाव का रेडियो फीजी टू में पूरा ना जाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे कुमार नाकाफी में जाता है रेडियो फीजी टू सुनता है रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन अ न्यू एप हैज बीन लॉन्च बाय द फी The MyFMPF app allows members to access a host of services using their mobile phones or other smart devices. The app, which went live today, shows members' account balances, housing eligibility, and preserved balance. Users can also look up deposits made by employers and download or email their account statements. FMPF Chief Executive Chochi Kuroi says the app is meant to bring services closer to the people of Fiji. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. After a rainy, thundery weekend, the weather pulled itself together. Plus, it's the start of a new month. Probably that's why. Now let's see how the other centers coped with the weather today. A look in the west, it was a typical sunny day for many with light showers expected overnight. Eastwards from Pak Suva, it was quite cool with sunshine being the joy, plus it was quite breezy. And up north, it wasn't a wall-to-wall -wall sunshine initially, but there were strong spells of it. And for the tides, a low tide at 11.24pm with high tide at 5.40pm. For tomorrow, there is high chance for the country to still see some more enjoyable conditions. Tomorrow's temps, major centres will be cool in the higher 20s. And looking further on to Wednesday, it looks like we are having a much needed change in the weather phase, dazzling sunshine with cool temperatures. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask what should be done to improve shipping services in the country? Uh, there should be more boats. I think the government should uh, provide the. Uh, more shipping services. We should have uh, more security uh, to look after our bags and the foods that, um, that we send out of the other islands. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, have you ever wondered why your jeans have a tiny useless pocket? Today we have an answer for you. Recapping the main stories for tonight, crime spree panics Tadiroi residents, Gaunda says detained ships meet safety standards, and Rambuka says he'll run in the next election regardless. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question last week we had asked, would you consider taking a ferry to escape peak time traffic? 62% said yes. This week we're asking, do you agree with Sodelpa that non Itauke Fijian citizens are Vulangi or visitors? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, as reported earlier, FBC has today turned 65 and the staff mark the achievements of the broadcasting house with a grand celebration. 
You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news, hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. Before we leave, today was also National Toothbrushing Day, and the FBC staff led by example, taking time out to take care of their dental hygiene. Take a look. Good night. Nadango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, a waiting to put in the Nandi, Yao Domarata, and Navarro and a radio figure. They are Asna Vatili, our mother Monica. Don't the Barro Valle, when I don't my bit in Lambasa. Pula, Nadango Prosan Garcia, Goer Craki, the Televion of Arrong and a radio figure, not Domi